Hello everyone, welcome to NG's Corner for Nurses. Happy New Year to all of you. Hope all of you are doing well. Let's start today's session. We will start with urinary system. Urinary system is one of the four excretory systems in our body. The other three are associated with bowel, lungs and skin. And this urinary system is also known as the renal system. In this video, we will cover the name of the organs under urinary system, then the overall functions of the urinary system, then we will discuss the anatomy of the kidney, including its external anatomy, internal anatomy, blood supply, nerve supply, and lymphatic drainage. The urinary system is consist of pair of kidneys, pair of ureters, one urinary bladder and one urethra. We know the main purpose of the urinary system is to eliminate waste from the body. Controls levels of electrolytes and metabolites, regulate blood volume and blood pressure and blood pH. So let's see the functions of urinary system. The kidneys regulate blood volume and composition, help to regulate blood pressure, synthesize glucose, release erythropoietin, participate in vitamin D synthesis and excrete waste in the urine. The ureters transport urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder stores urine and the urethra discharges urine from the body. Next coming to the external anatomical features of the kidney. First is location. Kidneys occupy the epigastric, hypochondriac, lumbar and umbilical regions. It is located just above the vest between the peritoneum and the posterior wall of the abdomen. So the position of the kidney is said retroperitoneal. It is located between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebra, partially protected by the 11th and 12th pairs of ribs and the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney because the liver occupies space on the right side superior to the kidney. The color of the kidney is reddish and it is a bean shepherd organs. There are two poles. The upper pole is broad and is close contact with the corresponding suprarenal gland and the lower pole is pointed. There are two surfaces. The anterior surface is said to be irregular and the posterior surface is flat. And there are two borders. The lateral border is convex and the medial border is concave. Kidney is 10 to 12 cm long, 5 to 7 cm wide, 3 cm thick, a mass of 135 to 150 gram, about the size of a bath soap. Near the center of the concave border, there is a deep vertical fissure which is called renal hilum, through which the ureter emerges from kidney along with the blood vessels lymphatic vessels and nerves. Each kidney surrounds by three layers of tissues. The deep layer is known as renal capsule. It is a smooth transparent sheet of dense irregular connective tissue and it serves as a barrier against trauma and helps to maintain the shape of the kidney. The middle layer is known as adipose capsule. It is a mass of fatty tissue surrounding the renal capsule. It protects the kidney from trauma and holds it firmly in place within the abdominal cavity. And the superficial layer 
is known as the renal fascia is another thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue that anchors kidney to the surrounding structures and to the abdominal wall. Next coming to the internal anatomy of kidneys. A frontal section through the kidney reveals two distinct regions. Please see the picture. First is the renal cortex. A superficial smooth textured reddish area is known as renal cortex. Then the renal medulla that is the deep reddish brown inner region of the kidney. And the renal medulla consists of several cone shepherd renal pyramids. The base of each pyramid faces the renal cortex and its apex which is known as renal papilla points towards the renal hilum and the renal cortex divided into an outer cortical zone and an inner juxta medullary zone. The portion of renal cortex extend between renal pyramids are called renal column and a renal lobe consists of a renal pyramids its overlying area of renal cortex and one half of each adjacent renal column. The renal cortex and renal pyramids of the renal medulla constitute the parenchyma of the kidney. Within the parenchyma, there are the functional units of kidneys, about 1 million microscopic structures which is called nephrons. Urine forms by the nephrons drain into large papillary ducts which extends through the renal papilla to the pyramids and the papillary ducts drain into cup-like structures called minor and major calluses. Each kidney has 8 to 18 minor calluses and 2 to 3 major calluses. A minor callus receives urine from the papillary ducts of one renal papilla and delivers it to a major callus. From the major callus, urine drains into a single large cavity which is called the renal pelvis and then out through the ureter to the urinary bladder. And hilum expands into a cavity within the kidney called the renal sinus which contains part of renal pelvis, the calluses, branches of the renal blood vessels and nerves. Next coming to the vascular segments of kidney. The renal artery gives five segmental branches, four from the anterior division and one from its posterior division. So each kidney has five vascular segments, apical, upper, middle, Lower, these four on anterior aspect and on the posterior aspect there is a posterior segment and in posterior aspects other segments seen that are the parts of apical and lower segment. Next coming to the blood supply of the kidney. In this picture we can see there is the arrangement of the arteries in the kidney. So, Blood from abdominal aorta at L2 level, blood from there it's going to renal artery. Then five segmental arteries, then each segmental artery, then lower artery, interlobar artery, arcuate artery, interlobular artery, afferent arteriole, glomerulus, and through there from glomerulus into the afferent arteriole, then peritubular plexus, interlobular vein, arcuate vein interlobar vein, lobar vein, segmental vein, then five segmental veins, then going to renal vein and from there drain into inferior vena cava. Please pause for a while and go through this slide and please recapitulate what we learned in last slide. Next coming to the nerve supply of the kidney. Most renal nerves originate in the celiac ganglion and pass through the renal plexus into the kidneys along with the renal arteries. 
and the renal nerves are the part of sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system next coming to the lymphatic drainage lymphatics drain into the lateral aortic lymph nodes following the course of the blood vessels if this content is useful for you then please put a like and share it with others and for getting more videos like this you can subscribe my youtube channel ng's corner for nurses and for any queries or suggestions you are most welcome to comment thank you for listening